Hello, this is Chris with ChrisStock.com. Welcome back to our TNN9 video series. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about that C Sharp MVC module that we created in the last video. I'm going to give you an overview of the solution for that particular project. Now, this video assumes that you already have DNN running locally at dnndev.me with the DNN project templates installed and you've already created a project utilizing that MVC template. If not, go ahead and check out the earlier videos in our series. Now in this video, we're gonna go ahead and load up Visual Studio 2017. We're gonna do that as an administrator. And I'm gonna show you how, if you've pinned Visual Studio 2017 to your taskbar, how you can set that up so that it will always start as an administrator. From there, we'll open the solution and dive into that solution overview. Now, in the next video in our series, we'll talk about creating a web forms module in DNN 9 with C Sharp. So if we switch back over here to my development environment, you can see I've got an instance of DNN running. I'm already logged in as a host or a super user account. For now, though, we're going to bypass DNN itself and go into Visual Studio. So I have Visual Studio 2017 pinned here to my taskbar. What I'm going to do is right click on that icon. I'm then going to right click on the Visual Studio 2017 option and choose properties. From there, I can click on the advanced tab under the shortcut tab and check the run as administrator option. And what this will do is it will take that shortcut that's on our taskbar and always run Visual Studio as an administrator now. So I'm going to go ahead and load that up here by clicking on that icon and that will load Visual Studio 2017 for us. Now from there, we can go ahead and navigate to our solution in order to open up the solution file. Now the solution file for an MVC project should exist in the desktop modules folder underneath a folder there called MVC and then within a folder for the name of your project. In my case, I'm going to open up a project called Sample MVC, which exists in desktop modules MVC, Sample MVC, and then there's a solution file there. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that link to try to open that up here in Visual Studio. And it will go through the process of opening up the solution and it should open up the project file. Now, earlier today when I was loading, up, loading the solution, it did stall on the project file and I had to right click and choose reload and everything loaded fine the next time around. In this case, loads up the solution and the project itself fine. So here in Visual Studio 2017, let's go ahead and kind of take a quick overview of what's in this solution. So within the Solution Explorer on the right side of the page, we can go ahead and take a look at all of the various folders that are here. We'll skip over the Connected Services option and the References, but if we expand the Properties section, you'll see that there's an assemblyinfo.cs file. Within that, you can change the version number of your module if you were to open that up. You will get the code towards the bottom there, in which you can change your version numbers. That'll be important as you do new releases of your projects. After that, we have our app local resources folder. Now this app local resources folder is where the RESX files or the resource files are for our DNN project. So there's a resource file here called item.resx, and it has some localized strings. If you're providing a module that you want to have localized in different languages, you can create different resource files within that app local resources folder. After that, we have a build scripts folder. I'm not gonna open up these files, but these are the files that do all of the packaging when you build your module. In that last video, we built the module in release mode, and it packaged that module up into a zip file for us so that we can easily install it within DNN. From there, we have a components folder. Now the components folder has a feature controller class. This feature controller class has some optional interfaces that you can implement within DNN called iPortable, iSearchable, and iUpgradable. Now in the project templates, these interfaces are provided in sample code, but they're all commented out. So if you want to utilize those, you can uncomment those sections and then add the interface to the class definition at the top of the feature controller.cs file. After that, we get the item manager file. This item manager file in the class is utilized within this particular module. So when you create a module using the MVC module template, it creates a simple module that allows you to 
create a collection of items. Now these items are very simple. We'll see what they consist of here as we dive further into this particular project. But the manager allows us to create the definitions for methods for our items. For creating an item, for deleting an item, we could delete an item by, based on ID and a module ID or just the object itself. We can retrieve a list of items based on a module ID. We can get an individual item. We can update an item. So there's a number of functions that are stubbed out here within the item manager class. From there, we've got a controllers folder. Now the controller folder has an item controller. That item controller provides some of the functionality for deleting an item, editing an item. These are the actions. So it's the, the service calls that are going to be handled within our MVC module. So if we want to be able to make the, the call the function for delete or call the function for edit through the front end, we have the controllers here which define what those resources are. We also have a settings controller. The settings controller is very similar to the item controller, but it retrieves and allows you to update module settings. Now in a future video, we'll dive into module settings here, but you can see that there are actually two module settings that come with the MVC project template. They are called setting one and setting two. From here, you can retrieve those settings or down below, you can see how we actually update those settings. So we'll go ahead and close the two controllers. We get into a folder here called documentation. The documentation folder is simply a remnant of the project that gets created uh, when you create the project with the templates. You can go ahead and delete that folder. It's not necessary going forward. Just provides you some basic documentation after you create the project for the first time. From there, we get into our models. And we have two models in this particular project. We have an item model and a settings module or setting module. From here, we can dive into each of those models. And the item model has a number of properties on the item class. We have an item ID, a name, a description. We also, within this module, have the ability to associate the item to an individual or a user. So we have an assigned user ID. Our items also have a module ID created by user ID, a last modified by user ID, and then a created on date and a last modified on date. These are just properties on our item object. Now our settings model has setting one and setting two. One of them is a Boolean and one of them is a date time currently based on that model. You could change those properties if you would like. From there, we get into a providers folder. Underneath providers, we'll find data providers, SQL data provider. And inside of that, we will find a file called 00.00.01.sql data provider. That is a SQL script that is used to create the table necessary to house our items with, for our module. So this is a DNN specific SQL script. And by DNN specific, I say that because there are tokens in here that will be replaced when the DNN executes these SQL scripts. If you want to manually execute the SQL scripts, you can, but you need to replace these tokens for database owner and object qualifier. Most users will simply change the database owner token to be DBO dot and most users will change the object qualifier to be an empty string, so remove that from the scripts. This particular script creates a table called sample MVC items, and then it adds a primary key to that table. There's also an uninstall script. This will drop the sample MVC items table when the module is uninstalled. After that, we get into a views folder. The views folder has a couple of subfolders underneath of here. We've got an item folder, which provides a view for our edit CSHTML file and our index CSHTML file. The edit file here allows us to create the interface in which we can edit the modules or the items within our module. 
You can take a look through that and see how all of this is built. And you could take a look at the index.cshtml. And this actually provides the listing of our items. So we'll see how those function here in just a moment as we get logged into our module. From there, we have our settings folder with a settings.cshtml file. This provides an interface with a checkbox and a text box for the two settings, setting one and setting two that are defined for this particular module. Now, in this case, the module actually doesn't utilize these settings, but the settings are there. We could add those settings into code and start to utilize them. After that, we've got a shared layout CSHTML file, which just has a div tag and the render body. And then we have a view start.cshtml file, which essentially references that layout file within that shared view folder. Now from there, we have some other basic contents of our project. We've got a license.txt file. This is utilized whenever you go to install this particular module within DNN, you get a license that's displayed to the end user uh, performing the installation. So you can put whatever you would like in there. We have a module.css file that gets loaded. If we want to have any custom CSS on the page, we can provide that within our module. We've got a packages.config file, which is just a NuGet reference. And then we've got release notes. So this release notes.txt file is a file that also gets utilized during the installation process within DNN. And you can provide HTML content here for release notes that were displayed during that install process. And then finally, we've got a sample mvc.dnn file and a web.config file. You're going to ignore, for the most part, the web.config file. These are references and things that are already configured for you, so you don't need to make any changes to it. The .dnn file, however, has some references to the DNN manifest here, which will allow you to go in and change the version number of your module. You can change the name, the friendly name, the description. We can change various things like the dependency for which version of DNN this particular module supports. And then you can change the references to the SQL scripts, the uninstall SQL script, and simply getting into the module definition itself. Now check out later videos in our DNN 9 series as we'll get into more details about the DNN manifest file. So this is a, a quick overview of the actual module. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this module does. So I'm going to switch back over here to my dnndev.me website. And I was already logged in as a host or a super user account. So I'm going to click on the edit pencil in the bottom left hand corner. And I have this particular module already installed here on the home page. And out of the box, the module simply says no items defined. What that tells me is that there are no items created within this particular module at this time. Well, when we're in edit mode here, we can mouse over the pencil and we can actually add a new item into the list. So if we come in here, we can give it a name. We can give it a description. Now, if we go ahead and click save, it's actually going to save that particular item. And what we see here is item name displayed along with item description. Now you'll notice that they're two different fonts. The item name is a little bit bigger than the item description. It also has an edit button and a delete button or an edit link and a delete link here for our item. Let's go ahead and add another item just so you can see what happens if you have multiple items in the list. And we're just going to be very generic here. In creating our items, we're going to say item description, item name two, and item description two. And as we create additional items, you can see they simply display on the list here on the page. Now, the the display of these is controlled by that view control. So if we switch back into the views folder, we go into items, we go into index.cshtml. Inside of here, we can see the HTML with a unordered list, a UL tag, and then it loops through all of the items in our model and it will display those items. It wraps an H3 tag around the item name. It wraps a div with a class TMTD around the item description and then has some configuration here to control whether or not the edit and the delete options should be visible. 
Now, those will only be visible on the page if you're logged in with edit or delete permissions. We can demonstrate that by switching back over here. If I log out as that host or super user account, I can now still see the two items, item name and item name two, but those edit and delete options are no longer available to us. So this video turned out a little bit longer than we had planned, but hopefully it was a good overview of what the MVC module provides you. Definitely start to dig in and create your own modules, make changes to the existing modules based on those templates. Take a look and see what you can do within the power of DNN. This is Chris with ChrisDoc.com. Thanks for watching the video.